Hello everyone, today we continue learning Python and today I'll show you how to use facet design pattern in Python. So let's start. But before we start that video, I recommend you subscribing to my Telegram channel. You will find lots of materials, modules, libraries, examples and tasks on Python in my Telegram channel. Also, I put all the announcements there. So if you want to understand what will happen to the channel in the near future, you can go here. And I respond to comments much faster than I do it on YouTube. So subscribe to my Telegram channel, link in the description down below. I am a businessman and I need to build a new business center. Okay, what do I need? What classes do I need? First of all, I need an investor because I need money for my business. So investor has a function invest, invest, and uh, let's just print investing like that. Okay, and then I have class vendor that gives me my materials. So vendor define um, for example, give. So vendor, it's a class that gives us our materials for our building and uh, giving the materials, for example, materials like that. And then we have our builder, the class that builds our business center. So again, we are a businessman and we need these classes to build our new project. So builder has build function and let's print building, building the Oh, just building, okay? Building, like that. So again, we are a businessman and we need both. Uh, we need investor, vendor, and builder classes to build our new project that will give us money in the future. And how can do that in Python? So as you can see, I created three my classes. Investor has invest function inside of it and it just print investing, give, give you the materials and build building. Okay, let's create our main. Um, if close, so if name equals across main, that means that our Python file file is ran directly. So we use py neg example in our case, and um, yeah, we just run our file. We do not import it because if we import our file, so neg example inside of another Python file, name of our Python file is not main. Okay, so I think you understand. If name equals across main is true, and we run our file directly. And what do I need inside of here? So I need to build my project. So investor, I need to create investor at first, equals investor, then vendor equals vendor, and then builder equals builder, like that. So I have three of my classes and let's, um, most of the times you don't have one investor, one vendor and one builder. And because of that, I want to have four loop that um, makes our investors invest vendors give us the materials and builders build our project. Okay, so for I in range three, so have three investors, investor dot invest function, then for I in range, uh, for example, for vendor dot give. So vendor gives us our materials and for I in range, for example, I don't know, 20. So I have 20 builders, builder dot build like that. So as you can see, now our code works. And if I run my project, as you can see, investors invest in our project, we have our materials from our vendors and we build our, our building, our business center. Okay, and let's print uh, project finished. Like that, project finished. Let's run it again. And as you can see, everything is all right. But there is one problem with our code. What's that problem? It's readability and mm, how do I say it? Okay, readability. For now, it's just uh, the readability of our code. So as you can see, we have three classes, and these classes have their own unique methods. So invest, give, and build methods. And the problem is that if we don't know every method of our class, we can have some serious problems in the future. For example, what if investor cannot give us our money? So we have random inside of here. What if builder? cannot build or what if give function gives, for example, not the materials we need inside of our code. That's the problem. And that is where facet helps us in our code. So what we can do? As a user, I do not need to write all of that. Because imagine that as, an, as a businessman, you need to talk to every builder, to every vendor and to every investor. Okay, I have to admit that you will talk to every investor and maybe to every vendor but you have to delegate your tasks to your builders, to your helpers, to your accountants, for example. And that is 
where facet helps us. Because now, if I would translate that example to the real life, I need to talk to every investor, to every vendor, and to every builder. But what if I have 200 builders? I don't know, 40 investor, 40 vendors and 30 investors. That's a big number, and I need to have my helpers, my people who work for my company, to help me to talk to everyone, to make a deal, and so on. Because of that, what we can do, we can create that helper. We can create our employee. So let's copy that code. And let's create class facade, like that. So what I'll do inside of here, I will create init function and uh, let's paste our code inside of here. And uh, yeah, just like that. So init function and for example, start project function, like that. So investor, builder and vendor, uh, I'll rename them to be self.investor, self.builder and self.vendor, like that. So as you can see, what we have right now, our facade class has investor, vendor, and builder inside of it. And start project function um, executes the code we executed before. But what is the main difference? And let's copy that and paste um, our project finished line right here. But what is the main difference? The main difference is that as a user of our facade, what we need to do, we need to use facade, so facade equals facade, and then facade dot start project. So what I'm doing right now as a businessman, as a businessman, I start my project and I do not need to talk to anybody because my facade talks to every investor, to every vendor and to every builder. All I need to do is run that function. And imagine that you use um, a library for, um, for business simulation, for example, you have all of these classes in that library. And imagine that you need to understand every class, every function and every variable for investor, vendor and builder. And you may have markets, um, I don't know, stocks. You, have, you may have lots of classes inside of that library. And that is where facet is very helpful. What we need to do as a user is import that facet from that library and just simply facet equals facet. So create our object and then start our project. That's all we need to do actually. And that is much better because as you can see, we have a specific code. If we don't have money, we cannot buy materials from our vendors. And because of that, we need to use self investor invest at first. If we don't have materials, we cannot build. And because of that, we need to at first get these materials to our builders and we get, uh, get materials from our vendors. And as you can see, our code is um, in specific order. And because of that, we can use start project function in inside of our facade. And yeah, that's actually our pattern. So facade pattern, it's the pattern that has a combination of classes and um, a function or many functions. So actually we, cannot, we can make a function, for example, get materials and we can only get um, investors money and get the materials from our vendors. But we can, we can omit build or build. So that's up to you. But as you can see, that's how my code is. That's just my code, that's just an example, okay? So you have multiple functions inside of the advocate, but most of the times you have one or two functions that your user can use. So in our case, I am the user inside of if name equals equals equals, equals main. And as you can see, all I need to do to build um, a building, a business center is use facade.start project. Let's run it again. And as you can see, everything is all right. Because, but now our code is much more, is much better because we use our facade pattern. But there are two problems, two main problems with that pattern. First of all, you cannot use the whole, um, the whole, the every function, every variable of your classes. So for example, what if our investor can decline, decline, print, no money, for example, like that. What if our investor can decline our, our offer? Then I cannot use it in my facade because my facade only has invest function inside of it. And that's a problem, kind of a problem because most of the times facades have, um, like, you know, the code everyone uses. And yeah, in our case, style project works perfectly. But if you have decline, you cannot use it inside of here. Well, actually what you can do is accept investor as an argument 
in here. So investor equals investor. And then instead of just um, putting vacate and parentheses, you need to put a new investor right here. So investor like that, investor, investor, oh my God, investor equals investor like that. And then actually you can use investor.decline, but I don't really know how that decline method um, works with that code because that code still runs invest, runs give and runs build. Well, you have a limited, um, a limited code that you can only use when you work with facades. But that's not a problem if you, if that code is the mo if that code repeats every time. So for example, if you only need to, if you, your class does not have decline method, then actually that code is better because all you need to do is use invest, give and build. But again, you can use a limited functions, limited methods, a limited amount of methods and functions inside of your facade. That's one problem. Another problem if, is that your facade can be a god object. So get ob god object, it's the object that executes a lot of functions, like a lot of functions. It has lots of things inside of it. So for example, what if we have our visitors? So let's create class visitor, visitor like that. And let's put visit function inside of here, visit function. And let's print visiting, visiting like that. And like that, visiting. What if our facade has visitor inside of here, self visitor equals visitor like that. And then after we build our project, what we can do is use for i in range 100, for example, we have 100 visitors, self visitor, visit like that. So why is that a problem? Because we have investors, vendors, and builders that are responsible for building our test, our business center. But visitor is responsible for visiting our business center. And you can see that this, um, this and that class are not compatible with each other. And actually we have a problem inside of here. So as you can see, we built our project, but then we have visitors, but only our visitors have visited our project, our business center, we print project finished. And that's a problem because if the project is not finished, how our visitors can visit our business center? I think you know what I mean, but that's not the worst problem because as you can see, our code, our facade class has lots of classes inside of it. Well, actually not that much classes, but what if you have 12, 20, 30, 159 classes inside of your facade? Well, that's a problem. And because of that, you can create sub facades for your facade. So for example, class um, building facade, like that, building facade. And let's put all of the classes that are responsible for building our project inside of building facade. So init right here, investor, then let's remove that and let's copy that code in our start project function and let's put it inside of our building facade. So for example, I'll create a function build project and let's put it right here. So as you can see, what we have now, we have our building facade that is responsible for the building of our business center and we have built project function inside of it. And in our, in just the facade, what we have is, is our visitor. But what I can do is create a sub facade. So building, building, how is it called? Building facade equals building, building facade. And as you can see, I use facade inside of another facade. And why does it help us? Because as you can see, I have building facade inside of here. And if I want to build my project, what I can do is use building facade inside of my uh, building facade dot build project, build project inside of my start project function. And that's actually it. So yeah, now let's run our code again. Uh, well, actually we use facade. Ah, yeah, but as you can see, first of all, we build our project. Let's go to the top. We build our project, we invest, then we give the materials and we build our project. And only after that, as you can see, project finished and we visit our business center. And that is much more better because as you can see, our code is cleaner now. We have visitors, we have investors and every class is in its place. That is much more better and you can create sub facades for your facade. Yeah, 
So these are two, uh, this is facade design pattern and that is how you can use it. Actually, you can use building facade if you want. So if you only want to build your project, you can use building facade and build project. As you can see, all our user needs to do is create our facade and call one function. Let's run it again. And as you can see, everything is all right. We don't have visitors now, but we only build our project. And that is much more better. So that is facade design pattern. And by the way, design patterns are flexible. So if you want to add another function, if you want to add start project and finish project function, you can do that. But what is the real aim of the facade is to com combine lots of classes that our user does not want to use and create a function or a method or two, three functions, four functions, five functions that call um, our classes, call our methods in a specific order. So execute the specific code. And that is the main aim of the facade design pattern. So I hope you understood about facade design pattern. Thank you for the watching and good luck.